Mega Man 2 for Game Boy. Man, I have... I have some mixed feelings about this game. But, uh, overall, I'm gonna say I really like it. <clears throat> so this is another game, uh, I bought when... when it came out. You know, in 1992. Uh, I got it for... I believe I got it for Christmas. Well, one year after I got Mega Man 1 for Game Boy. <laughs> Uh, yep, this game was released in early 1992. It came out after Mega Man 3 for the NES. So the developers did that, uh, they followed the same formula for the, uh, the first Mega Man Game Boy game. And that is, uh, this game features four bosses from Mega Man 2. So the four Robot Masters that were not in Mega Man 1 for Game Boy. And then they included four Robot Masters from Mega Man 3 for the NES. Did I say that right? So, Mega Man 1 has bosses from 1 and 2. And then Mega Man 2 has bosses from 2 and 3 for the NES. So it's kind of kind of a little neat little mashup. Which is kind of cool. You get to use, uh, you get to try new weapons in in uh against bosses that weren't featured in the original nes games so as far as mega man's uh powers go uh, mega man 1 for game boy was strictly just jumping and shooting uh, mega man 2 for game boy uh, they introduced a slide uh, there's still no tarred shot though the charge shot's not introduced until Mega Man 3 for Game Boy. As for uh, items that you can collect, uh, the first Game Boy game had just one item called Carry. It, it just uh, uh, creates a little stationary platform that you can you can uh, deploy under your feet in midair. Uh, this game, on the other hand, introduced uh, the Rush. Your, your faithful dog, pet dog companion, robot dog companion Rush. Oh, this room! So check it out! So this guy falls down from the ceiling and starts shaking his fist at you, those helicopter guys. That is the only room in the entire game where they appear. So... <laughs> Uh, I played through this game. The first time I played through this game, well, the first few times I played through this game, uh, you know, I get to the ending scene, and uh, you know, it shows the cast of uh, enemies in the game, and it shows this uh, this helicopter guy, and I'm weirded out. Like, what was he in the game? Well, it turns out he's in that one screen, <laughs> in this one level, and the screen they put him in, it's. Like, I, I wasn't speedrunning or anything. I just climbed up the ladder, jumped up and grabbed the next ladder, and I I would be surprised if anyone saw him before uh, just leaving, you know, if you, if anyone saw him appear before just leaving the room, which is what I ended up doing. I don't even remember how I stumbled upon him being in that room. Anyway, this is uh, Krashman, um, who has a pretty easy AI that you can cheese. It's actually, you can, I do the same thing in Mega Man 2 for NES. It's a little trickier to pull off, and the Game Boy version is pretty easy. So this game originally did come out in Japan, and there was some translation confusion, and I always get confused. So this is Clash Bomb in the, uh, in the NES game. It's Crash Man. And in the Game Boy game, it's Clash Man. And I assume just a simple, uh, just a simple uh, translation error. You know, in Japanese, it's just Kurashman. So let's see. This is the first Game Boy game with uh, Rush as your companion. I just got the Rush coil, so I can bounce around to high places. Um, and uh, this was 
This game has my first experience with Rush since, you know, I didn't really play the NES I didn't play the NES games until long after I played until after I played all the Game Boy games. And I guess I guess they did Rush differently in this game where uh or the Rush Jet. Rush Jet is differently in this game than most or all other implementations of Rush. So the Rush Jet, you can actually... Uh, he, in the other games, he just kind of starts rocketing forward once you hop on his back. In this game, you hop on his back and he just waits. He just sits there. He just kind of floats in air. And you can fly in all eight directions, up, down, left, right, and diagonal to uh, any place you want until the energy runs out or you change weapons. And it's so convenient. Kind of... Kind of a little too easy. Oh, I always try to get through this room without getting hit. How did I do here? And I screwed it up. <laughs> Probably should have gone down that ladder. So let's see, this is also the first Me Game Boy Mega Man game where they introduce E-Tanks. So extra, extra energy tanks that you can collect to have a little extra energy. Oh my gosh! Finally. Oh, cool. Rush Coil to the rescue. Going. One of the cool... One of the things that's uh, kind of neat since, uh, since unlike the NES games, so the NES games is... Uh, wow, I got another one up. The NES games are designed where you choose from... You start the game by choosing from one of eight Robot Masters. In the Game Boy games, you fight the first four and then the second four. And... Uh, By by doing that, and and you get the the three rush, rush, uh, rush items. So rush coil, you know, the jumping spring, rush jet, so you can fly around, and the rush marine, to go in water. Uh, you get those all before you, before you even have the opportunity to meet the 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 next the second four set of uh, bosses. And the consequence of that is, in this game, they can actually have segments that force you or at least heavily suggest that you use a rush item because you know the game knows you can be guaranteed the game can be guaranteed that you already have that item at that time you get to that stage so that's a neat little neat little change once again like uh, Mega Man 1 for Game Boy this is the same robot masters the the same general feel to the stages but uh, very much remixed so it's all new, all new levels. I love this image, uh, this full screen image of Mega Man and Rush. Hey, Rush Marine! He's a good boy. So I think. Oh. I think, man, I just really like the graphics of this game. So Mega Man himself is the same sprite as in the first game. Same uh, same little image of Mega Man. Uh, all five Mega Man games use the same sprite for Mega Man, which I really appreciate. It really makes the series feel, series feel cohesive. Mega Man 1 through 5. Um, the graphics are great. Um, there's a slightly softer feel to the graphics. I don't think that's a technical term. I think, so compared to Mega Man 1, the, the graphics, the way they design the, the, the sprites and the backgrounds, they're still very clearly deline delineated. Like there's very few places where you'll get, uh, where you'll get like, uh, oh, I could use the Rush Marine here to swim through, go through the water. Oh well, it's not too hard. Uh, so there's very few places, if any, where things get really, really muddled, like the background and the uh, the fork and the, and the and the sprites get uh, you know confusing to interpret. It's really clean and easy to easy to see. There's not as much uh, intricate details as other Mega Man games for Game Boy, but it still looks good. Uh, I think why it would look softer is I think they uh, I think they made less of an effort to uh, put a lot of really sharp contrasts 
there's a lot more... I don't know, like all shades of gray in the background tiles and all shades of gray in the in the foreground tiles and sprites. So it's a tiny bit more muddy, but still looks really good. Look at that tree. You know, the, the like the electric... I don't know, is that a... Uh, I don't know. Ever since I played the game uh, Flashback for the PC, I've always been uh, fascinated by the idea of uh, like electronically enhanced forests. Like trees with uh, electronics in them. I think it's such a cool idea. I can't tell if that's happening in this game. Anyway, there's robots living here. Well, I guess I just had to use the uh, special item on Woodman there. Sorry, Woodman. Not sorry. Um, yeah. The thing that this game is probably no most notable for, most notable, most known for, I think the thing that this game is most known for is that it has a un so compared to all other Mega Man games, this game has a completely unique soundtrack, and that soundtrack is not not up to par with the uh, with the rest of the. Um, the Mega Man series. You know, the Mega Man series is known for having uh, really, really good music. So I'm actually playing, for this, uh, for this playthrough, I decided to play through a, I added, I applied a uh, ROM hack. So this is the original game, uh, but uh, a person, let's see here. The user called <laughs> Supper. A person called Supper made a ROM hack, and I'll uh, link to that in the description. Made a ROM hack that changes, modifies, fixes some of the music issues in the game. So I think most people who are used to the, or have experienced this game would, well, I would say it's, uh, it's, uh, so there's a lot of percussion, a lot of the music is very high-pitched, and some of it just sounds off. Aww, the air tiki's. They're so tiny in this game. These guys are enormous in the NES version. I played Mega Man 2 for NES recently. I never realized how tiny they were in this game until uh, I saw the direct comparison. Aww. Gosh, they have such a surprised look on their face. I think they're supposed to be, like, floating giant floating air octopuses or squids I don't know anyway um, the music in this game um, a lot of it's not bad actually this stage the airman stage is uh, one of my favorite uh, I love this song um, but yeah really high-pitched some of the notes are a little off tons of percussion it certainly has its own vibe. The music has its own feel to it. Very unique in this game. And, uh... But anyway, this, uh, this ROM hack I'm playing, the user called Supper on uh, romhacking.net released this uh, ROM hack in 2019 that... Uh, I'll just read his description. Let's see... This hack attempts to improve the music by fixing two apparent errors. Number one... The first is an objective programming mistake. The game's note to, note to frequency conversion table is wrong. Some values are correct, while others are one higher than they should be, resulting in over a quarter of the notes playing off key. So I love it when people find stuff like this in code. Like it's so cool. Like it's just like it doesn't it doesn't sound terrible. So I can understand how it got through like uh, quality assurance testing or whatever when they were making this game, but. Uh, I guess it's just pretty obvious that, uh, right, according to the, the music, the sound conversion, note to frequency conversion table is, uh, just has some, some typos or mistakes in it, wrong calculations. So that's corrected in this. Uh, reading on, number two, the more obvious problem and the more subjective one is that much of the music has the lead instrument set an octave higher than most people find pleasant. So this ROM hack is, uh, they uh, went lowered lowered the pitch uh, of the lead instrument of the music down one octave. Ooh! So we beat the first four bosses and made it to Dr. Wily's fortress. So this is the end of the game, right? Time to confront 
Dr. Wily. <gasps> there he is! Him and his shifty eyebrows. I used to have fun in this part, so I didn't do it in this playthrough, but if you mash the attack button, you actually gain control right here, and you can shoot a little bullet at Wily. And I remember, like, whatever, 20 years ago, I asked online, or I pointed this out online. Oh my gosh, you can actually shoot Wily directly. You know, not in his one of his machines or anything. And uh, someone just responded, yeah, he probably just jumped over the bullet off screen. Uh, let's see, so this is the second half of the game. You don't get to fight Dr. Wily now. Instead, he drops you in a room with four teleporters, leading to stages and bosses from Mega Man 3 now. Uh, Mega Man 3 for NES. So it's actually really similar to uh, the first Game Boy game, but you know, in this by this part of the game in Mega Man One for Game Boy, you would be in a teleport room and you would just uh, you would just be teleported directly to the boss fights. But in this game, yeah, you know, they actually include the, all the stages for it. It's kind of nice. It's a lot more game. And you get passwords. And... I wonder if they just ran out of time in the first game. Eh, whatever, I still love the first game. Oh, and because of that whole uh, that whole thing I mentioned, where uh, you know they took so for Mega Man 2 for Game Boy, they took bosses from Mega Man 2 NES and Mega Man 3 NES. Uh, so because of that whole little mix and match thing that they did for these Game Boy games. Uh, one of the consequences is the bosses, two of the bosses from Mega Man 1 for NES, who are, I think, Bomb Man and Guts Man, never made an appearance on the Game Boy. And since all I ever played was the Game Boy games, I didn't even know they, they existed. Like, <laughs> this is so weird seeing that they're, oh wait, there's, there's two more bosses I've never seen before. Whoa. Uh, in regards to the music, uh, I think this uh, I think this ROM hack is really good. I recommend it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the original music is just fine. It has a really it's, it has a unique uh, feeling to it, which is pretty cool. But the ROM hack I think is an improvement, so I'd recommend it. Additionally, a uh, user on YouTube on the internet, uh, his name is uh, I think Rushjet One, made a remixes of all the music from this game. Remixes? They're barely remixes. They're just re-implementations, you know, using HD instrument instruments. And yeah, man, I love it. I'm going to put a link to uh, his stuff in the description as well. I uh, bought a copy of that and really like listening to them. To the, uh, the remixes were made. That's a user Rushjet1 on YouTube. Oh yeah, so as for my opinion on this game, I mentioned it's complicated, but I ultimately like it. Um, when I first played this game, when it came out in 1992, uh, I liked it. Uh, I loved the first game. I, I seem to remember noticing that it was easier than the first game. I could beat the first game. <laughs> I learned to beat the first Mega Man game by using a Game Genie. And then eventually getting practicing and getting good enough to beat it without needing Game Genie, without needing cheats. The second game was notably noticeably easier though. Um, I noticed things were a little different than the first game, but it was fine. Like I liked playing through it; it was a good game. Uh, I went through a time period. So then, you know, Mega Man Three came out, Mega Man Four, Mega Man Five, and my the amount I liked Mega Man 2 kind of decreased compared to the later games and even Mega Man 1 after uh, thinking about that more it's just uh, they're just overall I think Mega Man 2 is a good game but the other games the other four games in the series for Game Boy just outshine it which is unfortunate so I you know I went for a while where I was like oh this is the worst game in the series not even worth bothering to play it but then the more I play it you know I've been replayed it a few times a few times in recent years and it's enjoyable 
So yeah, I've learned to appreciate it for what it is. I like the unique music. I like the unique feeling of the game. Oh man, I haven't even gotten to the story. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. So, I mentioned briefly that this game's a little easier than other Mega Man games. I think this is one of the easiest Mega Man games, classic Mega Man games. I just, I just got three one-ups in a row. I guess they max out at nine. Hey, I'm gonna use the uh, Airman weapon. I think that's the only time in the game it's useful. Oh, and here I use uh, Rush Jet. I hate dealing with spikes. So I use Rush Jet to just fly up. Yeah, he just flies wherever you control him to go. It's kind of convenient. Super convenient. Uh, yeah. So ultimately, I'd say my... I would recommend this game. This is a, uh... I think it's a solid game. It's not as good as other Mega Man games, but it's still worth playing. Um... Even at the time, though, when I first played this game, and especially now, I did notice that there's a lot about this game that just feels a little off or a little weird. Um, so, first of all, as I mentioned, this game is very easy compared to other Mega Man games. Uh, another thing that makes this game feel just a little bit off from other Mega Man games is there's a strange jumping mechanics, strange jumping physics. It's really hard to see, and it may even be hard to notice when you're playing, but the jumping mechanics they gave, uh, the developers gave Mega Man this tiny little oomph, this tiny little extra boost at the, at the apex of his jump, at the very top of his jump. And I think they did that because there's, there's, in all the other Mega Man games, there's a lot of pixel, well, not really pixel perfect jumps, but very difficult jumps. That if you don't time just right, you'll just die and it's annoying. And I think they gave him that little extra, that little extra kick in his jump to make it easier. And it does well. It helps a ton. I, I don't think uh, I found. I don't think I died once in this game. It is easy. The jumping, slightly different jumping uh, mechanics make it a little easier. Uh, what else? So very little damage is taken when you get hit. Like you can get hit a ton in this game. It's very forgiving. Um, there's no knockback when you're hit, and that's that really stands out compared to other Mega Man games. In Mega Man games, if you get hit and you're anywhere near a ledge or in the middle of a jump, that's it, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting, you're, you're gonna get knocked off the ledge and into the pit. Mega Man gets, uh, traditionally gets hit back so far when he gets hurt. In this game, it just kind of goes, uh, he, you know, there's a little hit animation and you just keep going. I think you can even continue walking when you get hit. It's just super forgiving. Which once again, isn't bad. It's just, eh, different from what, if you play, you know, whatever, I'll, 15 or 20 classic Mega Man games, eh, they all pretty much play the same, so you'll notice if uh, things are a little different. When you get hit on a ladder, you don't get knocked down like in other Mega Man games. You can just keep on climbing up. You literally, I mean, it's not even a pause, you just keep climbing up. It shows the hurting animation while he's climbing on a ladder. Uh, I already mentioned the unique soundtrack, which makes it feel a little weird. What else makes this game feel weird? Oh, there's a plot involving time travel. I don't know of any other Mega Man game, uh, you know, classic series Mega Man game, where uh, time time travel is uh, part of the plot. You would never know it without reading the instruction manual. Actually, I don't think you'd even know it if you didn't read the instruction manual in Japanese. But uh, yeah, it's time travel. Uh, another weird thing is that your bullets actually go through enemies, I think. Maybe only some enemies. So when I hit that that guy in the hard hat, the metal there, the bullet hit him, he exploded. What am I thinking of? Oh, I see. So if the enemy is in a damaged state and you shoot another bullet, then the bullet will start to pass through them. All right, I guess that's not that weird. That might be unique to the Game Boy series, or just to this game. Oh, which leads to another point that makes this game feel weird. The other Mega Man games, especially the NES games, and also the, uh... Oh, good. I'm gonna get, get another one-up I don't need. Compared to the uh, other games in this series, the, uh... The bullets have this, eh, really unsatisfying mush sound when you, uh... 
when you when they when they hit an enemy. So you shoot the bullet, weep weep weep, and then you know hit the enemy and it just goes mush mush mush. Compared to the NES games where it's got the satisfying clank sound. So nice. What's the point of using the ladder? Oh whatever. At this point, I've got full. <laughs> At this point, I've got full full lives and full E tanks. Like it couldn't get easier. <sighs> Let's see. I mentioned I already mentioned another thing that makes this game unique or weird is that it's uh, one of the only games where the rush jet can fly in all the eight directions. Also, when you oh my gosh, more one ups. <laughs> also, in the ending of the game. When they show the, uh, <laughs> it's getting comical. Uh, oh, I hate this part. I should have just used Rush Jet to fly over this. Eh, whatever. I wanted a bit of challenge. Wee. Oh, this was terrible. So this is the battle with Top Man. Top Man. He spins around in a circle, like a top. Uh, I could not remember. I had the hardest time remembering his pattern and how to hit him. I can kill him without getting hit. Just not this playthrough. I could not remember it. I think I finally remembered by the end. Oh well. Another thing that makes this game just feel a little a little off is uh, the ending when they show all the, the cast of characters and just all the, the regular enemies in the game. They use their Japanese names. They didn't really translate them into English. Almost none of them made English. So it just has this, another thing that gives it this weird otherworldly feel to it. Oh nice. The whole last stage is all, uh, has this time theme to it. It's cool. I guess we'll get there. All right, the story. I mentioned the story. Oh, wait. So the people who made this game. So this is the, there are five Game Boy Mega Man games. Uh, all of them were made by the company Minakuchi Engineering. With the exception of this game. It was made by Japan System House. So I did a quick search. Japan System House, the development company, made one other Game Boy game, which I'd never heard of, called Taiyo no Yusha Fiber. I don't know what Fiber is. It looks like it's, I think it was based on an anime. Um, and <laughs> I looked it up on I looked up a playthrough on YouTube real quick and smiled because I immediately recognized the. Uh, what is it? The music. The music is uh, in this other... So this one company, Japan System House, made two Game Boy games, and both games, Mega Man 2 and this Firebird game, have the same feel to their music, the soundtracks. Like, I think you could put one of those songs in this game, and it, would sound, it wouldn't sound out of place. Like, I instantly recognized the... Uh, what is that called? The feel to the music. I don't know. So that was kind of fun. Oh, yeah. So by this point in the game, so you have to use Rush Coil to get over this thing. But since it's the later four levels, stages, the game knows it can be. you can be guaranteed that the player already has Rush Coil to get over it. Oh, I love it. Super Slide! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> this is another good song. Alright. So we're almost to the last stage. So this game has a weird time travel story to it. But you'd only know it by reading the instruction manual. So let's see. On the uh, person did a really great translation of the Japanese instruction manual for the game and posted it online and I'll link to that uh, credit in the in the description for this video so I'm just gonna read it it's kind of wild so let's see here according to this translation of the Japanese instruction manual for the game it says in Mega Man 1 for Game Boy Dr. Wily was defeated by Mega Man even with this crushing defeat, he was already planning his next scheme when he came upon a devious idea. If he could get his hands on the time machine that was being developed at the Time Space Research Laboratory, 
Dr. Wily thought he just might be able to change the past. Yes! If Dr. Wily could return to the time before he first started his rebellion, back when Mega Man was still just a household robot, and launched a surprise attack using his strongest robotic forces, there would be no way he could lose. Ah, the classic, so that's the classic uh, story of go back in time and kill the hero before he becomes strong. Before he was born. Before, when he, back when he was just a, uh, a household cleaning robot or whatever he was. Anyway, continuing on with the story. Several months later, Dr. Wily had succeeded in stealing the time machine from the Time Space Research Lab. He had wanted to set out immediately on a trip across time, but had to put an emergency... emergency... put an emergency break on his plans when he discovered that the time machine had a serious flaw. Meanwhile, Dr. Light had been dispatched to the time... Uh-oh! This is the climactic battle. Oh, I didn't get to it yet in the story. This is Quint and his pogo stick. Um, as we'll find out soon. <laughs> so after you beat all four, uh, all four of the bosses, all eight, I'm sorry, all eight robot masters, you face off against Quint in Dr. Light's lab. I'm sorry, <laughs> Dr. Wily's uh, fortress. And Quint is Mega Man from the future, riding on a jackhammer pogo stick. Oh my gosh. And, you know, there's no way you'd know this unless you, like, read the Japanese instruction manual. And oh, there he is, uh, Quint item, Sakugan. Or in Japanese, it's Sakugan. Sakugane, I always called it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> he rides around on a robotic pogo stick jackhammer. Anyway, sadly, uh, it's such a cool idea, fighting your future self. But, uh, hey... Rush Rocket. Wily escapes to his fortress in space. Ah, and then you get this... Oh, it's so cool. You get this, uh... Time... Time, uh... Time-themed level. The final stage in the game. With all these weird bendy clocks. You know, based on the famous, uh... They look like the famous painting. All the warped clocks. Such a cool motif, and the theme, the song that's playing in the background is just the uh, the title screen theme, title screen song. Kind of a neat little callback. <sighs> oh my gosh, there's so much in this instruction manual story that just doesn't matter. Um, where was I? Doctor Light has been dispatched to the Time Space Laboratory to investigate. With the help of Rush's super sense of smell, he was able to deduce that it was none other than Doctor Wily behind the theft. Having a bad feeling about the incident, Dr. Light quickly called upon Mega Man and Rush to search out Dr. Wily's whereabouts. Okay, so in this part in the story... Uh, someone is broken in... has uh, broken into the Time Space Research Laboratory. Rush recognizes it as Dr. Wily. So Mega Man and Rush go after him. Okay. So then you're playing the game, and let's see, where is it? Before long, Dr. Wily had finally managed to modify the time machine. However, the time machine could now only travel into the future and back. But the time machine can't go into the past. So since Dr. Wily can't uh, go back in time to before Mega Man was uh, Mega, instead he goes into the future to spy on Mega Man's future. He found that the future Mega Man had been reset back into a peaceful household robot. Recognizing this chance, Dr. Wily conspired with his own future self. Holy crap! Dr. Wily talks to his future self to bring the battle functionless Mega Man back in time and alter him to make him fight against Mega Man of the present. Back in the present time, Mega Man and Rush were finally closing in on Wily's fortress, you know, that we saw earlier in the game mowing down even the strongest enemies in their path. But little did Mega Man know that he'd soon be facing off with his own future self. Dun dun dun. This is so cool. Way too complex. <laughs> like, they could have cut out most of that story. Oh my gosh, more one-ups. They could have cut out most of that story and it would have been, you know, the same. Oh man, I'm already at the end boss. Crap. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, that uh, that that climactic battle, that big battle with uh, with Mega Man's future self was that was uh, yep, that was that guy riding on the pogo stick. That was incredibly easy. Kind of kind of anticlimactic. So this is the Wily battle. I realized at this point in the gameplay that I got the pogo stick item, but I never I never use it. It's kind of useless. It's really hard not to get hurt. So I, I just turned it on here just to doink around with it, show what it was like. <laughs> yep, it's a pogo stick. It's really well implemented. It's so cool, but so useless. This last, the only stage you get it in is just, you know, it's, you only get to use it in the last stage and the last stage is really short. Anyway, Dr. Wily here has three phases and it's a good battle. I really like this end battle. It, uh, yep. It's got some good challenge. It would have been so much better if it was, uh, if the attacks took more damage out of Mega Man. Instead, like, I really don't play that well. And I could easily tank all this, uh, tank all this damage. And I, I used, uh, I used one energy tank to refill my health, and that was only because, that was only because I was doinking around with the, uh, playing around with the pogo stick. <laughs> the mega pogo stick. Which is better, the mega pogo stick or the mega soccer ball? I don't know. I realized while playing it this time, is Dr. Wily launching, what is he launching into the air? They're like little guys. Are they Mets? The guys in the hard hats? I can't tell. Oh, it's so weird. There's so much weird stuff in this game. But yeah, it all adds up to having its own, own unique feeling and flavor. That's the game. Oh my gosh. Mega Man collected a power-up? Oh, he got a power-up! Oh, I get it! So that bullet, Dr. Wily was uh, launching rockets with eyes. And he has the power-up now, so he launches a rocket with the eyes. That's what he uses to stop Dr. Wily's. He's trying to escape. Hey, that's clever. Hey, Japan System House developer, you're all right. That's clever. Oh, I love this. Crash! Dr. Wily's crash lands into Earth and goes up in a skull-shaped pile of smoke. Smoke cloud. Uh, it just gets... It's so ridiculous. I remember, then you know, the Mega Man games that come after this just get more ridiculous. Mega Man 3 ending is uh, one of my favorites. GB. And then you get the little cast of characters. And so as I mentioned, there's all, I think very few of them are translated from Japanese. We got one on. And uh, yeah, Mega Man's still in space. Hammer Joe. Yeah. So even though this game was a, uh, you know, kind of a mashup from Mega Man 2 NES and Mega Man 3 NES, it really has its own, it's all unique levels, it really has all unique music, has its own feel to it, really unique feel to it. Um, I would recommend it. I think it's, oh, Mecha Kettle, that means, uh, what is it? Mechanical Frog. <laughs> Make five. So I think the biggest... The biggest drawback in this game is just how easy it is. Which is a shame. Because it's, uh... There's a lot of fun to be had in it. I don't know, it's kind of the idea of, uh... If it's... T you know, you don't want a game to be frustratingly hard. But if it's too easy, you're just going through the motions. Oh well. Ultimately, though, I recommend it. I think, uh... I think the music isn't as bad as many people, well, I think, uh, you know, people have their own opinions, and uh, many people dislike the music in this game. I don't think it's as bad as the internet makes it out, seem, seem, makes it seem to be. I think the graphics are great. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I like the, uh, you know, you know, having Rush. All the rush items and being able to slide. And it's amazing. So Mega Man 3, the next game for Game Boy, is uh, once again very similar to this game, but yeah, it has such a different feel to it once again. 
it's amazing. They all have the same sprites, the same, the same, uh, you know, general layout of the game where you just like Robot Masters, you play through a stage, you get the boss. Uh, you don't know the story really until unless you uh, read the instruction manual. But they feel so different. Have such a different vibe to them. And I think it's ultimately the the uh, you know in this game, ultimately it's the good stage, the the good stage design, the uh, fun rush items, and the uh, the vibe to the the feel to the game that uh, makes it worth playing. Yep. So. I recommend it. Let's see who's left in this enemy list. Kaminari Goro. Lightning Goro. Crushman. I love their little faces, they're so cute, little dances they do when you when you select them. Hard man. He's hard. <laughs> I thought Top Man was so lame. Watch out, I'm a spinning. Oh, and his weapon. Oh my gosh, I never used his weapon at all. I love Magna Man, what a cool idea. I really like the the Robot Masters in Mega Man 3. That was one of my favorites. Needleman is super cool. He's one of my favorite fights battles in this game. He's he's a good challenge, especially if you try to do it without taking damage. Hey, future Mega Man, Quint. <laughs> and his pogo stick. It was a while before I realized. Do they show his pogo stick? Oh, they don't show it here. His pogo stick actually has eyes. Like it's actually a robot. His pogo stick. Uh, whatever it's called. Uh, drilling. Drilling machine thing. <laughs> Jackhammer. Robot Pogo Stick Jackhammer. And that's the story of Mega Man. And now he met his future self and stole his robotic uh, Pogo Stick Jackhammer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 